Eustace just wanted to introduce his dad to his friends, and his dad's like, I cannot be bothered. At this point, Reen and the others returned to their rooms for a much-needed shower. Then, after a short rest, they headed to a restaurant in the central plaza for dinner. I want dinner. I did have breakfast today, though. That's something. I had a chocolate croissant. It was delicious. <sighs> the breeze here feels wonderful. <laughs> the food was delicious, too. Agreed. I can see why this restaurant is popular with the nobles. Do you dine here often, Eusis? I do. The chef has been good to me since I was a child. I was practically raised on this food. How typical. Even in your dining habits, you nobles subsist on unnecessary luxury. That's one way to look at it. Or you could look at it like his family can't be bothered to make him a home-cooked meal, so he has to rely on the restaurant. Though I can't deny the quality of the food. It wasn't just tasty, but warm, too. Yes. For a high-class restaurant, the chef seems to have used a lot of very healthy ingredients. Perhaps he's doing his part to ensure Yusa stays in good health. I wouldn't doubt it. I, I wonder what Group B is doing right now. <laughs> we had this exact same conversation in our group last month, too. I miss Lara. Bring back Lara Smash. I'm sure they're hard at work over in St. Ark. Probably nothing to worry about. It was Keldic for you last month, right? So you were thinking of us on the first night? Yeah. After dinner, we were wondering how Group B was getting on. Dare I ask? Uh, well... I think you can imagine how Group B was getting on. By the fact that Sarah had to run over to them immediately. Nowhere near as peacefully as now. This is a big improvement. I... kind of figured that much. We are doing much better this time. That much is true. Huh. And I'm sure our reports will reflect that. It is an improvement, though I'm not convinced it's good enough. It... it's not? I'm certain Group B gave their absolute best in all of their tasks today. Probably. But can we honestly say the same? That we could have done no better? And I'm referring not just to the monster encounter, but to the handling of our other tasks as well. I mean, I guess I could have magically found another piece of tree sap or punched that noble before he had the chance to ingest it, but I feel like punching people is largely frowned upon. Hmm. We'll just have to try and make up for it in the day we have left. Besides, we have the chance to catch sight of a far bigger problem. Yes, that's true. First we find out taxes are rising throughout the province. Then we find out the military is being expanded on a grand scale. Don't even try to tell me the two aren't related. I have no intention of denying it. But you're only looking at one side of the coin. Exactly how many Oxen tanks do you think the Imperial Army has under their control? Well... A hundred or two, I'd guess. Precisely. The Imperial Army's military capabilities are enormous. This nation has one of the most powerful armed forces on the continent, and roughly 70% of it is under the Chancellor's control. Tell me, how is the Noble Alliance supposed to counter that? So you're suggesting that's why the Provincial Army needs to bolster its forces? You're back. Welcome back. Considering both sides are comprised of Erebonians, it all seems so wasteful. Oh, the travails of youth. How noble and beautiful they are. Uh, excuse me? Oh, this guy. It's you. Baron Blue Blanc, I believe. Ha <laughs> ha! It's such an honor that you would remember a mere Baron. I see you completed a hard day's work already. How splendid! Yes, nearly. What about you? <laughs> Alas, I have yet to be blessed with the fateful encounter I seek. Okay, well, on your way. Go, go about uh, searching for it. The search for beauty is filled with perils and obstacles. Yet that is precisely what makes it all so beautiful.
Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay. <laughs> you just nicely telling him to screw off. If you told me that this dude was Ferris and what's his face is dad, I would believe you. <laughs> by the I way. most certainly will. Though it truly is a pity that the clear air of this verdant city should be tinged, if but faintly, with the scent of steel. <laughs> I'd heard that Duke Alborea was a man of many interests, but I was unaware he counted playing with fire among them. Who doesn't like fire, though? I don't condemn you for it, though. For only by playing with fire can one create fireworks. Would you not agree, my friends? I don't like your implications. And I think this whole line of conversation is a little inappropriate. Oh, please do pardon me, young lady. I meant no harm, I assure you. I think you did mean harm, actually. I wish you well on your remaining day here. May you reveal to me the beauty I seek by its end. Also, when did I tell you I only have one more day here? And why are you stalking me? Be it the lovely luster of success, or the sad splendor of failure. I like that his hair tie has Who wings, does he, think he is? He does have that going for him. This it's is why I can't stand nobles. <laughs> I thought you might say that. If it makes you feel better, though, I have my doubts as to whether that man truly is a noble to begin with. What? His behavior seems so exaggerated. Almost as if he's trying to act like the quintessential noble. Like he's fulfilling the stereotype. I feel like a lot of people in this game are fulfilling the stereotype, though. Yeah, something about him feels off to me, too. But what's even stranger... Is that he knew we only have one day left here. It, you're right. We told him of our field study, but never once did we divulge how long we intended to remain here. Between him and that silver object, we've been crossing paths with a lot of strange people today. Well, tomorrow's the end of our stint here. We can't let ourselves get distracted. We still have a lot to do. That's right. We have to do our group proud. Exactly. We should return to the hotel and begin work on our reports then. Surely that guy will not, uh, become a problem later. The kids don't know he was in Celtic, but to be honest, since he was there, it'd be pretty easy to assume a pattern of stalking. Yes. <sighs> Can't get to sleep. I could ask you the same. You aren't going to tell me the bed's too hard for you, are you? <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. I've never slept in a bed this high class in my life. Not even back at home. And yet you're the son of Baron Schwarzer. You've not lived the life one might expect of a boy from a noble family. Yeah, that's just how my dad is. A lord should live like his people, not above them. That's how he always put it. I see. It sounds as though you have a good family. Yeah, I'm very thankful for my upbringing. Aren't you going to ask? I assumed you'd be curious about that brief exchange with my father earlier. You both really sleep on your backs with your arms straight next to you, huh? I wasn't really sure you'd want me to bring that up. You obviously get along really well with your brother, but I didn't get that same sense with the Duke. Has he always been like that? Bring back Rufus. As far back as I can remember. I suppose he just has little respect for a son born to a commoner. 
Oh. What? My brother and I have different mothers. He was born of my father's legal wife, a noble who still lives to this day. My own mother, however, was a commoner, and she passed away eight years ago. If he doesn't like that he has a child that was born to a commoner, then maybe he should have kept it in his pants and not slept with a commoner. In other words, I am his bastard son. I had no idea. So, was that chef we met earlier? He's my uncle, on my mother's side. Oh. Perhaps that's why he's always been so good to me. Or perhaps he's simply compelled to treat me as I deserve to be treated, being the son of the Duke. No, I think he actually likes you. No, that can't be. You're a side sleeper forever? I either sleep on my side or my stomach. I don't blame you for being a little cynical, but there's no need to be quite so hard on yourself. Could not sleep on my back. Just doesn't happen. I suppose you're right. I'm... I'm sure you have your differences. What does the Duke's wife have to say about all of this? But you do get along with your brother, right? You could say that. He's treated me well ever since I was taken in eight years ago. He was the one who taught me my swordsmanship, and who trained me in the ways of court etiquette. <laughs> I knew it. Pardon? There's just something honest, I guess you could say, about the way you fight. It shows that whoever taught you was someone you really trusted. Why is Reen's blanket levitating? Uh, it's part of being a swordsman. When we Swords first master. met him this afternoon, I had a hunch he might have been the one. What's wrong? <laughs> it really is just floating there. <laughs> Nothing at all. Maybe he has his knees up in a really weird way? You just keep reminding me how unlike a noble you truly are. <laughs> I get that a lot. Is your injury from this afternoon on the mend? It's fine, honestly. There's no pain, and the wound's closed up like it was never there. I'll have to be sure to thank Emma's grandmother for her help someday. Yeah, Emma's grandmother. Definitely. That's good to hear. Still, from where I stand, you are something of a danger to yourself. I am? On the day of the entrance ceremony, when the trapdoor opened beneath us, you acted instantly to protect Elisa. It wasn't even a moment's hesitation. Ah. In most cases, one would reflexively act to protect himself. It's part of man's natural survival instinct. Yet you put another before yourself, not even pausing to question the validity of that decision. And you did exactly the same thing with us today. I'm sure most people would see that as an act of selflessness and sing your praises for it. But to me, it comes across as abnormal, perhaps even twisted. How dare you care about other people? <laughs> I, uh, don't know how to respond to that. I wasn't expecting you to see through me quite so clearly. Well, I owed you as much for having seen through me first. Still, the point stands. You need to be more cognizant of the effects your actions have on those around you. If not for your health and for your reputation, that selflessness of yours can just as easily be perceived as arrogance, after all. How is Machia sleeping through this? We're not even whispering. I know it can. And you're not the first person to tell me that. What's the point in saving others if you can't spare even a moment to save yourself? That's what my old master always used to say to me. Was it now? <laughs> I suppose we both have some things we need to work through. Yeah, but for now, we need to get a good night's sleep. If we stay up too late tonight, we're going to be dead to the world tomorrow, and that wouldn't be fair to the others. That's what coffee's for. Wasn't there someone in this town who said he was known for his espresso? Just take a couple shots of espresso. Yeah. 
I agree. It wouldn't be fair. To the girls, at least. I'd hate to be so tired as to limit my potential. Here, here. Good night, Yusus. Pleasant dreams. He wasn't sleeping, but at least he sleeps on his side. Keep up the good work. I miss you, Sarah. Maybe Machius will be less mean to Yusus now that he knows Yusus' mother is a commoner. Here's the envelope Lord Rufus entrusted to me. Please take it and study its contents well. Field study envelope may. Thank you. Much appreciated. If you'll excuse me then, should you require anything further, please do not hesitate to let me know. All right. Let's see what my brother's given us for today. Yeah, I'm kind of anxious. Field study day two assigned tasks. Only two. Right, because there's the, the hidden one. The Bite of Nostalgia. Owner Hot Hammond. Uh, I'd like to request someone's help in gathering a number of ingredients I need to make a particularly nostalgic dish. For more details, come find me at Sorcier, a restaurant in the Central Plaza. Got it. Uh, we have received word that a dangerous monster roams the North Croison Highway. This is bad news for our hotel, so may I ask someone to please take care of it? Monster Venus Mantrap. Location of Stone Bridge leading toward Keldic on the Northern Poison Highway. Richelieu, General Manager of Hotel Esmeralda. Got it. Another well balanced assortment. You know. I wouldn't be surprised if Rufus had predicted what happened yesterday from the very start. You're saying he intended to give us a first hand look at the problems between the nobles and the commoners? If that's true, I'm impressed. His reputation is well earned. Sure does seem that way. I believe that's enough talk about my brother. We have we only have one day left before we must depart on our return voyage to Trista. We should set out as Eustace Alborea. We're we're voiced now. What is it, Machius Regnitz? I will accept no more failures. Today, we will form a combat link. Oh, great. I'm stuck with the two of you again. What? As much as I may dislike you, I'm ashamed that we were unable to do what every other member of our class has accomplished. Today's monster extermination request seems as good a chance as any to make up for yesterday's failure. What did you say? You really are simple-minded, aren't you? I suppose you overheard our conversation last night and feel some kind of affinity toward me now? Nonsense! I did no such thing! I was fast asleep while you yammered on about your family and Reen and... Reen should have definitely been able to tell that Machius was awake based on his breathing. Isn't that like a swords master thing? Or is my life a lie? Duh. Machius. <laughs> That's pretty conclusive. Mm. <laughs> Very well. I accept. I'll be happy to show you what a proper combat link looks like. <laughs> we'll see about that. Fortunately, I have more than enough generosity of spirit to endure being paired with an arrogant noble like you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe today's field study will go more smoothly than yesterday's after all. Lord Eusus. Arno? What brings you here? I would have expected you to be at my father's side. I'm terribly sorry I could not greet you upon your arrival yesterday. However, I have come today in the capacity of an escort. An escort? To where? 
I'm sure you must be aware that I returned to Bereahard purely as part of a field study for my academy work. But of course, however, His Grace has directly requested that I escort you to the mansion. Why didn't he take him back yesterday then? So I would be most appreciative if you'd accompany me without delay. Are you trying to kidnap lemon juice? Father? He showed no signs of desiring my company when we spoke yesterday. They are taking our boy. I am in no position to question or oppose his orders, merely to obey them. I'm sure you understand. Though while I hesitate to speculate, I do wonder if his grace may feel some regret regarding his demeanor yesterday. You said his grace, but your text says his excellency. Question mark? I... But... Go with him. We can attempt to form a combat link another time. We'll be able to handle the morning's tasks just fine on our own. Don't worry about us. Ha! Huh. You've come all the way back to your hometown. It would be a shame not to visit with your family, right? Agreed. Uh, are you certain? Very well. I'll return this afternoon. And though I will worry as to how you'll fare without me, I know you'll at least give it your best, for what that's worth. <laughs> of course we will. All right. Let's meet back in the hotel lobby around noon. If something comes up, just leave a message at the front desk. Understood. Lead the way, Arno. Gladly, sir. Please excuse us. I don't trust it. Where are you taking him? Well, let's get started. I don't think his father wouldn't want to give Jesus any further caring. reason to worry, now would we? Huh, certainly not. Still. What? What is it? If you have something to say, just say it. <laughs> oh, it's nothing. Nothing at all. She's probably thinking, the worst is over, and it's all thanks to your eavesdropping. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> Stop that! Stop looking at me like I'm some hapless babe! Rain, you do know I still haven't completely forgiven you for lying, don't you? Are you still hung up on that? And Emma! I hope you're ready to score second in our midterms because I'm not about to lose to you again. But don't even think about giving those exams any less than your very best. I intend to best you when you're in top form. Yeah, you will? I, d I don't think you will. And as for you, Fee, I've been wanting to say this for a long time now. Sleeping in class is an affront to our education. Emma's thinking I need to tell Dorothy about this development? Yes. They definitely have their own little ship going on here. You need to start treating classes more seriously. Listen, take proper notes. Raise your hand now and then. Don't tell Fee how to live her life. And stop covering your ears when I'm talking to you. <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've got a lot to do, so how about we get to it? How do you get your eyebrows to do that, though? Real question. <laughs> right. 